Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm on vacation. I'm not supposed to be videotaping myself, you know, uh, at the resort. So, <laughs> you know, because it's a new resort. So, um, but I'm outside in a hot tub right now. And I'm not going to show y'all my nudity, so don't worry. <laughs> Y'all always see my shoulders on my readings anyway, so. But I'm telling you, I'm thinking about doing OnlyFans and doing Naked Tarot on OnlyFans. For real, for real. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, I was just having a moment, you know, and I wanted to just share it with you guys. I thank God for the ability to be able to heal in such a beautiful place, you know, to heal in a hot tub outside is a blessing to be able to heal here, you know, continue to heal, you know. Separation and divorce is really hard. Having a broken heart is really hard, especially for people who are suicidal, you know. And that's why I have to let this break up with this particular person. I have to let it be the last one because I have suicidal tendencies and broken hearts make me want to die you know what I'm saying so and I'm not gonna die y'all I'm not gonna let this divorce kill me I'm not gonna let this divorce kill me and I gotta hang on to my life until it's final you know what I mean on many levels I've been dying for like 22 years on many levels, you know, I've been dying for 22 years, but then nine years ago, I actually it escalated where I actually attempted to, you know, so it may not be a good idea for me to be in a relationship ever again <laughs> because I don't I can't trust myself you know what I mean I can't trust that I won't try to kill myself when they break up with me <laughs> so I gotta let someone that I really 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 love go because I don't know how to love right I don't know how to love right. I can't speak for the other people in my life. I can't speak for other people, but if a breakup makes me want to kill myself, then I, I don't love right. I don't love right, you know what I mean? I don't, my love ain't right when it comes to relationships, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to men. So I thank God for taking that desire away from me and I don't even want no man you know what I mean I just I don't want no man I don't want no woman I just want me I just want me and I want to be safe in order to live I got to be single I have to be single just to live And what's so sad is, it looked like my dream is right here. It looked like my dream is right there. But <laughs> I might be too broken for my dream now. I let somebody else's dream break my dream. 
in my dream it's like right here it's like right here it's an opportunity kind of sort of i think i don't even know my mind is confused and i don't i mean i'm not confused but i'm second guessing myself because I've been in survival mode for so long. You know, survival mode. And so, I gotta relearn how to trust myself. I don't even wanna trust myself because you trust no man. So really, this is really a good place to be, really, because you shouldn't trust no man, not even yourself. It's best to know yourself. Had I put trust in man, I would be dead by now. Had I put my trust in man, I would be dead because men don't love me. You know what I'm saying? Men don't know how to treat me right. You know? Can't go back because I gotta live. I don't wanna be suicidal can't go back I can't go back because I want to live <laughs> I want to live I want to live love is supposed to make you multiply love is, is supposed to be fruitful not tear you down not make you want to die But let me explain. Let me clean this up a little bit. I mean, I know I cry a lot. And I had went to church recently. And a lady at church told me basically to stop crying at church and complaining, basically. You know what I'm saying? So, fine. I'm going to keep my business to myself. No testimonies and shit at church. You know, I'm, I'm just being me. I've been hurt for so long and I hate church. I hate it, but I need it too. You know, I hate church, but I need it too. I need it because I'm alone and I don't have nobody else. I'm alone. I'm alone. After I didn't love it so hard, I love so hard. And it's okay because we came into this world alone and we're going to leave alone. And so, but then the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. I mean, it's just so, see what I mean? Everything is such a huge contradiction. So, I'm just going to. You know, love myself. Put the love that I put into other people. I'm gonna put that love in me. I don't know if my dream is gonna actually come true or not. I don't know. Who knows? Only God knows because I mean, you know, I'm so damaged. Who would? I'm so damaged. Who go well be? Who go well be? I wouldn't even do this to nobody. I wouldn't do this to nobody. I wouldn't do this to nobody. This is a mess. And I'm, I'm staying single. And if God want me to pass that church, he gonna have to bring me one. Cause I ain't letting no motherfucker break me down again. Break me down to nothing till I don't, I just wanna die. Break me down to nothing till I wanna die. And then won't even apologize for the shit they did. Won't even acknowledge it. Won't acknowledge it. Won't admit shit. Won't, in, won't even apologize. Am I really that off? Where I'm suicidal and you ain't got nothing to apologize about? Really? Where they do that at? 
who can hurt people and don't fucking apologize and mean it and watch them just die and hold and, and hold forgiveness hostage I freely forgive even with my tears even with a broken heart and pain there's still forgiveness in there this heartbreak and these tears right now is more so self disappointment I was a princess that became a queen my family wasn't perfect but they still invested in me I still have generational wealth in me and I'm handing it down to the next generation as well and the next because I have grandkids so I have two generations after me that I'm setting up that are set up and will be continue to be set up my new reason to live is to keep the generational wealth building in my family because that is love that right there is love all by itself and so I have all my ancestors inside of me I have the Holy Ghost inside of me I got my own spirit and will to live sometimes to, to love yourself again after someone just crush you in order to love yourself again you just have to be naked <laughs> I'm just I'm just naked in the garden. Naked in the garden of the Lord. And even though I, I really hate church, I do, I hate church. The people there are just so mean. I mean, how she gonna shut me up like that? This is, I mean, that's the only place I can talk. That's the only place, it's, it's my place of refuge. Ain't nowhere else to go on this earth. go within. We gotta go within. It's time to go within, people. You go within. If your brick and mortar churches are breaking your spirit, breaking you down, limiting you, and you having no growth there, you gotta save yourself. Even from churches. But I'm going to keep going and, and leading people, you know, because people, other people may be tougher than me. Maybe I'm just a weakling, you know what I mean? You know, I'm, a, I'm suicidal that tells you the level of weakness I am. So she was just probably calling out my weakness, you know. You a crybaby bitch, you know what I'm saying? You know, you was complaining. I had a girlfriend in Michigan told me I was complaining, basically. I need to stop complaining. I've had people tell me, you know, you're lucky. Lucky? How is wanting to die and be suicidal lucky? Stop complaining. And you lucky. You should be, you know, you lucky because your life ain't as bad as man. It's not no fucking competition. It ain't a matter of who life is worse. I can't testify about my journey because my life ain't as worse as yours. We live in a world where we have to wear masks. So we already ain't talking. And now we really ain't talking. We just want everybody to shut up and stop complaining. While death is all around us. Death is all around us. COVID. And people still want us to be sh to shut up. Be silent. Silence is... I don't know. I know. I I, Y'all know how I am about the Bible. Okay. 
I just don't think money. I mean, I know what the Bible say, but I think silence is worse than money. I really do. I think silence is worse than money. I think the Bible is just not a literal, it's just not a literal book. You can put any word in there and it's the root of evil. Anything that's not God <laughs> is the root of evil. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You can put money is the root of evil. Silence is the root of evil. Whatever the evil is that's taking over your damn life, that is it. That's the evil. The root of your problem. We limit the Bible so much. <clears throat> well, it's starting to be daylight. I've been out here. It was dark when I y'all know me. I don't, the last time I was here, I was I, I came up with the whole star and tree thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But tonight, um, I just you know I, you know just had a moment I want to share with you guys. Because you guys might be like me. It might be somebody out there just like me. You know. Your relationship skills suck. <laughs> your relationship skills suck. <laughs> I mean, you know, I just admit it. My relationship skills suck. It suck with my husband. It suck with my mom. It suck with my kids. It suck with everybody. And so, I'm the common factor. I'm the common factor in all these areas. Okay. I'm the common problem. And I may complain. I do. I may complain and make it seem like it's somebody else's fault. I may do the blaming game. And you probably heard me, you know. And then sometimes I might be picking up somebody else's energy. It may not even be me that I'm talking about. It may happen to relate to me some, you know what I mean? But Sometimes I pick up on somebody else's energy. Maybe somebody was in this water before I came in and I picked up their energy and just started expressing it, you know, expressing it from my experience. You know, it might have been somebody else's energy and emotions that might have been expressing. Uh, you know, this is all new to me, you know, managing the Holy Ghost and being able to manage while I try other spirits because with the Holy Ghost we're told to try try the spirits try them. you know don't be afraid you can't fear no spirits because the spirit in you is greater than any other spirit out here any other yeah. and that's why the, the, the spirit of suicide didn't overtake me you know I had I had more than one attempt like one, two, three, four, about four or five. Trying to, you know, stay committed to family life. I wanted my family to look a certain way before I check out this world. Because I have a generational commitment to my family to produce a certain product. A usable product for the next generations to come. So I couldn't leave here. Suicide was not going to win. A bad marriage, a bad relationship was not going to win. Because I have a purpose and a mission. And I'm, and, I, and I'm focused. You know what I'm saying? You know. And yeah, we let ourselves get distracted sometimes. You know. Do this person love me? You know. Or you know what I mean? We get all lost. Do they love me? Oh, you know. And we get off course. And it's like trying to chase love and love is innate love is automatic love is in the air love is just like breathing love is like taking a pee love is natural you don't have to find it or get it or earn it or measure it it's not measurable but the moment you put value on love that's when you wrong that's when you gonna go wrong when you put value or make love measurable in your relationship, it's over right then. It's over. Whenever you put money, you know, or anything, 
you know, before the relationship, then you know you're in trouble. You know you're in trouble. Money or anything else becomes more important. I mean, like, when you marry your parents, your kids, your job, your church, nothing. It's supposed to separate you from the love of God. Because see, the love of God shows up in marriage. Yes, he does. He sh God shows up everywhere. But marriage is his special place to show up and show out. <laughs> and so if somebody don't want to be a godly couple with me, a power godly couple with me, then baby, I'm just, I'm a power by myself. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm power all by myself. So if I'm going to be married, I want double portion of power for the Lord. I feel like a little mermaid. <laughs> Let's see if I can do my mermaid thing. Oops. <laughs> my mermaid thing. <laughs> so, but anyway, thank you guys for being here for me and my crazy ass. <laughs> crazy ass on my way to pastorship. And you know, I'm just gonna make, I'm gonna have a, a church full of crazy people. I want a church. It's almost mandatory that you have some type of mental illness or homelessness or something. You're going to have to have been broke down to nothing and, and willing to be sold out for God, looking like a fool, speaking in tongues, running around the Holy Ghost, praying on the floor, fasting. and eat. I mean, when at my church, we ain't going to play. It's going to be serious spirituality at my church. Period. Period. Come as you are. If you have to drag a church with a blunt in your hand and put it out on the porch steps, you bring your ass to church. I don't give a fuck. Hey, we can have a little smoke section on the back of the church. I don't care. Hey, at my church, anyway, I think it's a trap house right next door. Hell, we can come over and have church and then go next door and smoke. I'm just saying, whatever the hell it takes for us to love each other more and be committed to each other, you know, and to love the Lord with all we got. Love Him with all we got. And, and sisters, some of us know from experience that you can be married to a saved, sanctified man filled with the Holy Ghost and everything. And he's still going to put you through some shit. Even the most saved man is going to put you through some shit. You know? So, and I've experienced both, you know. You know, being married to a Holy Ghost filled man. And then, you know, and so I've been in both situations and when it all boils down, I don't think there's a huge difference other than the fact that the one with the Holy Ghost though, the one with the Holy Ghost, he gonna at least understand. He gonna know when you on your knees praying and when you fast and when you speaking in tongues and you slain in the spirit and acting crazy and all that he didn't know it's for him and he just might it just might prick him prick his heart <laughs> prick his mind even if he don't say nothing like typical men they like to keep us in the dark or whatever you know don't like to compliment us and acknowledge us and stuff you know they like to hide they love or whatever men do I don't know whatever but the man with the Holy Ghost, though, he has a connection, the same kind of connection with God that you do. So when you pray to God about him, God will shoot a dart right at him. <laughs> shoot a dart right at that brother. So, I, you know, I'm just saying, to me, that's the difference. That's the difference between, you know, being married to a man with the Holy Ghost and one that's you know so anyway i just love you guys thank you click like click subscribe and donate to dr alicia the preacher help a sister rise okay from the <laughs> from the troubled waters 
these waters are troubled. <laughs> Help us just to rise from these troubled, troubled waters. You know. And thank you for being on my journey of healing. And I pray that you're healing too. And I pray that my healing is helping your healing. You know. And that my honesty and vulnerability and truth. You know. And I just want to apologize to anybody out there who my marriage harmed. If my marriage, because of its problems, caused harm to your life, please forgive me. Please forgive me. We didn't know what we were doing. And at the point at any point along the way that I knew what I was doing, trust and believe that I have gone before the Lord, fallen on my face to ask for forgiveness. Because it's not my desire for a kingdom marriage to cause harm on anybody's family. So if my marriage harmed your family in any kind of way, and you know who you are, you know who you families that are impacted by my marriage, you know who you are. And I want to say I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. It was never my intention to cause harm to your family. Forgive me. Forgive me. I forgive you. Because all relationships are a two-way street. I forgive everybody out there. Anyone under the sound of my voice, looking at my face, whatever. I forgive you. Even if I don't even know what I did. You know, even if you ain't even told me what I did. You know, please forgive me. Please. Forgive me. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to hurt you or your family. I did not mean it. Especially the past nine years. The past nine years I had been under such a thick depression suicidal thoughts sexual sin you know and I'm going to talk about sexual sin because sexual sin may not be exactly the way we think it is and the way we teach it and stuff you know you know I'm just going to put it out there but in the meantime forgive me for it you know I'm married and I've had sex with you it's not many of you trust. There ain't that many people out there that I've had sex with outside of my marriage trust. <laughs> but, you know, the few of you, you know, forgive me for putting your soul and your heart and your mind and your family and your finances and your life in harm's way. You know, I did that. I put you in harm's way with my disobedience. And I want to say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm confessing my fault to you. And I say it over and over because I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. <sighs> my bipolar ass. <laughs> but God is good. He's good. Even when nobody else think I'm good. <laughs> he is still good. <laughs> you know. And he's teaching me. You know God. He's. You know. Refilling my cup. Because I, my all my cups got emptied out. And that's how much love and attention. And all that work I put into my family. My cups is fucking empty. So no wonder I need. You know I wanted to kill myself. Because there was nothing else in me. <laughs> You know what I mean? So now God is filling up my cup. He's giving me something to think about. Something to feel about. Something else. Something new. I'm not all the way. You know? I'm not all the way. But I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I ain't in nobody's mental institution today. <laughs> I ain't in nobody's mental institution. And I'm far away from my family where they ain't got to try to stick me in there either. I ain't letting my family put me in no mental institution. They, fuck them. Fuck my family if they trying to lock me up. I'd rather be naked in the hot tub. I'd rather be naked in the hot tub than a mental institution. Because they ain't like I'm hurting no damn body. 
I ain't trying to kill myself no more. I'd rather just be divorced than to kill myself. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? And I do intend to, you know, get in church. I don't, you know, and, and heal there. Let church be a place of healing. And I'm just going to be quiet. The lady said God told her to tell me basically to shut up. So I'm just going to do it. Maybe God do want me to stop running my damn mouth. I don't know. Who knows? So I'm just going to chill and keep going. I got to press my way. And I can't let no woman, no man keep me from God again. You know, no husband, no boyfriends, no girlfriends, no church members, nobody. I was out of church for 15 years, and that's just way too damn long. And I, I'm going to fight to stay in church. I, I don't care. I don't care who I got to fight. If I have to fight in church, I'm staying. you going to be the one going. <laughs> I already walked away from a family. I ain't, I ain't walking away from no church family. Once I, once I join a church, join, if I join a church, or start my own. I ain't going back. But I'm waiting on the Lord to start my own. <laughs> I'm waiting on the Lord. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because the church that I'm in, I mean, I like it. I, I connect, you know. But I ain't putting up with no church bullshit either. I'm going to sit at that church for at least a good year and just observe. And see how things go. Because I, I, I'm going to protect my heart this time. I'm going to protect my mind. I'm protecting my body. I ain't going to become no hoe again. Once God clean me up and, and put holiness back in my life, I ain't going to defile this temple again with no bullshit trying to keep a marriage. Turn it to a hoe. Trying to be married. Turn it to a hoe. They don't, they don't even, that's like a contradiction. You get married not to be a hoe. You don't get married to turn it to a hoe. <laughs> but I see somebody coming, so I need to go. All right, love you guys. Bye. <laughs>